everyone and welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is tiffany beeson from beauty and the beeson's and i upload every single tuesday and sunday today i'm super excited because we are doing all fall inspired recipes we're going to be making some breakfast lunch dinner and of course fall desserts because fall desserts are everything so i'm going to go ahead and put a list on screen here of everything that we will be making today i'm so excited not only to make these delicious foods and make the house smell amazing but also to be eating all of them i'm going to start out with two crock pot recipes so we're kind of going backwards where we're doing like the dinner the lunches and then we're going to get into the breakfast and desserts but of course, since we're doing crock pot meals, it's gonna cook low and slow all day, so we wanna get those in. Yes, I'm busting out two different crock pots right now because that's how we roll. Um, so the first two things we're making, I did go ahead and make my little meal baskets here, which I love to do because I'm definitely like an ADD person that will get overwhelmed if I'm making a bunch of different foods in an unorganized fashion. So I try to be organized as a meal basket here. This is going to be a, like a white, chicken stew and it has some wine in it and some fresh thyme and rosemary and onions and garlic and it sounds amazing um, and then this one is turkey white bean pumpkin chili so we're reading the reviews it's not very like pumpkiny it just gives it a beautiful color and obviously pumpkins have some ben beneficial um, nutrition for us so I'm really excited to make these I like that this one is using turkey, this one's using chicken. I also, a couple days ago, decided to uh, film the dinners that I was making because they just seemed like fall like dinners too. So I'm gonna add those in here. And that is a roast, as well as this one. Like the ro a roast is a roast. I, I liked it, but I can never get a roast full of flavor. Like maybe like once or twice in my life I've had a roast that I was like, wow, this has so much flavor, but I just feel like it's hard to get that perfect roast. If you have a recipe you love, let me know because I do like them when they're done right. This, the meat was good and tender. Everything was good, but it just wasn't super flavor, flavorful. Um, but the other one that I made is amazing and I'm 100% making it again. It was like a sausage butternut squash Alfredo and it was next level. We even had it the next day for the, like the leftovers even warmed up well which I feel like is kind of hard for pasta. Um, and then also, um, just in case I forget to tell you later, we are all of our recipes that I make on this channel are gluten-free, and that's just by design. If I'm using gluten-free pasta or gluten-free flour, you can just go ahead and use regular pasta, regular flour. Um, but the, my favorite pasta, hands down the best pasta, I've been gluten-free for 10 years now, is Jovial. You cannot beat it. It's made out of brown rice. There's other pastas that are made out of like corn pasta, and they're just not it. They get hard and it's just yucky. So anyway, let's get into this video. Right now, my husband and my two-year-old are out getting me some ground turkey, so we will start with the chicken stew first and then do the chili. So the first thing we're starting on, like I mentioned, is the white chicken stew. And this one requires more chopping than the chili recipe, so stay tuned. And it's not even that much, honestly. It's just some carrots and Yukon whole potatoes, onion, and garlic. So the recipe actually calls for like just a couple of carrots, but I'm using a lot more than that. I like a lot of veggies in my stew. All right, Evs is home and she's taste testing the carrots. How are they? Are they good?
So we have our potatoes, our carrots, our onion that like made my eyes water like crazy so I may have mascara all over my face but now we are doing six cloves of garlic. We're crying already. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the onion for our chili as well as the garlic. So, do that now. Also, pick the worst shirt to wear for a cooking. I'm really glad that part is over with. I literally had to just like wipe all the mascara off my face. That was, um, those onions were just a little extra today. <laughs> now we're just cutting the chicken for our stew. The good thing about this too is that you can prep this stuff the night before, like whenever you have time, then just throw everything into the crock pot. Like it doesn't have to be all same day, whatever is easier for you and your family. All right, so our first step in this stew is just browning the chicken a little bit. Also, this stew calls for chicken thighs, but I was not feeling chicken thighs, so we're doing hello. Chicken breast. Um, I'm just gonna warm up a little bit of oil. I'm using avocado oil, you can use olive oil. And then we'll salt and pepper this chicken, and then we can just throw everything in the crock pot. So the chicken is done. You don't want to cook it all the way, just a little bit. If you are using chicken thighs, <laughs> if you're cooking chicken thighs, you'll just want to like brown the outside, basically. Um, but now I am getting our fresh thyme ready. Call for two teaspoons chopped. Okay, so now that our chicken is in here, we're gonna add the sauce ingredients. So we have two cups of chicken broth, a half a cup of dry white wine, I use Chardonnay, a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar, a tablespoon of Worcestershire, Worcestershire tar, tar sauce, <laughs> two teaspoons of thyme, some more salt and pepper,
give that a little stir. And then we're gonna add in our fresh garlic, our onion, Then our potatoes. And then lastly, our carrots. And then we're going to cook this on low for about seven hours. Perfect. All right, so now we're moving on to our turkey pumpkin chili, which sounds so good. Basically just spraying the pan with avocado oil. We're going to brown our brown turkey. And then, sorry, that was really loud. Another thing that we will be making today is a fall like chicken salad wrap. That sounds so good. It has like pecans and craisins and apples. Just really good flavor. So that will be coming up next. I'm going to boil the chicken for that in just a second. But first, we'll stay focused telling myself on the chili. So basically, once this is all cooked up, we put it in the crock pot. I've got my, my old girl out. She's an oldie but goodie. Um, gonna put this in the crock pot and then we're gonna saute the onions and garlic in here with some cumin and then add that to the crock pot and the rest of our canned stuff. So the one thing I will say, like if you don't have time for this, if you're like leaving for work in the morning and you want to put something in your crock pot, but always do it on high for four hours once you're home. If you get home later, um, you know, you can prep all this stuff the night before, even down to pre-cooking your ground turkey and just throw it in the morning, cook it on low. All right, the turkey's almost done. I'm going to add our chicken in for our chicken salad. So I have two chicken breasts here. I'm just gonna put them in our pot. Oh. Pepper. And then I'm just gonna cover it with chicken broth and oil for our chicken salad. Super easy. I wanted to just grab a rotisserie chicken, but it was too early in the morning and they weren't out yet. So, wrong burner. We're adding our turkey in. If you have like super greasy turkey, drain the grease, but this wasn't very greasy. All right, using this same pan, I'm gonna saute our onion and garlic, a little bit of cumin. garlic, now I'm adding in one and a half tablespoons of cumin, I'm going to saute this for one more minute and then add it to the crock pot. Now we're adding in our beans, this is two cans of cannelli beans and white beans drained and rinsed, a can of chopped green chilies, a 15 ounce can of pumpkin, two cups of chicken broth, give it a little stir, some more salt and pepper, stir that up, and this one I'm going to do high for four hours. First, you have to plug it in. That's a really important step. All right, so Chris is chopping up the chicken for us, and we are getting started on these delicious pumpkin apple baked oatmeal bars. So, we're gonna need an eight by eight pan. We're gonna mix together our dry ingredients first, with this, which is just two cups of rolled oats, a half teaspoon of baking powder, a tablespoon of pumpkin spice. And we're just gonna give this a stir. We're stirring up the dry ingredients and then we'll start adding in our wet ingredients. So I'm gonna bring you closer so you can have a better look here. So we have a cup of pumpkin. 
One third cup of nut butter. I use peanut butter. They used almond butter. A half cup of milk. You can also use like non-dairy milk. A teaspoon of vanilla extract. Four tablespoons of maple syrup. Not pancake syrup, maple syrup. And you can also use honey instead of this. So we're just gonna stir this up. Now that that's all combined, I'm adding in one apple. And I forget what apples I got, but I'll have to look at Instacart and tell you. <laughs> and it doesn't call for chocolate chips, but I'm adding chocolate chips because chocolate chips make everything better. So spray this. Smooth this out. And this is optional, but I'm just adding some pecans to the top. Pecan, pecan. Bake this on 350 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay, so Chris went ahead and shredded up that chicken for us. Now I'm just cutting one apple, and we are using just ranch dressing instead of mayo because Chris doesn't like mayonnaise, and this just has more flavor anyway. And I'm also putting some pecans in it. Now for some pecans, there's no exact measurement, just do it based on your taste. Another chicken salad that I was obsessed with for the longest time, and Carter actually used to love it when he was a toddler, when it was just me and him home, um, was chicken salad with mayo and chopped up grapes, a little tiny bit of onion, and I think that was it. Maybe some almonds. One thing about me is that I like a lot of toppings and I like textural difference. All the things I hated when I was little, my food couldn't even touch. And now I'm like, what else can we mix in here? Like if we're going for ice cream, it has to have something crunchy in it. Um, and I also like to get hot fudge on everything. It's just, that's how I am. I love, I love textural difference and I love different flavors mixed together. Thanksgiving, you gotta mix your mashed potatoes with your corn, you know? Your turkey with your cranberry sauce. And remember the ranch has flavor to it, but I'm still going to add salt, pepper, and a little bit of onion powder. One thing you have to consider when making chicken salad if you're not eating it right away is no matter what, you don't want it dry, but you don't want it too wet because it'll ruin your wrap, but you also want it to have enough dressing on it so that when you take it out of the fridge, um, you know, some of it will absorb, be absorbed into the chicken. So you might want to do a little bit more than you would if you were having it fresh. I hope that makes sense. It's a great meal prep thing too. So good. It's salty and crunchy and amazing. Also, I don't know if I said, these are the mission gluten-free wraps. And I love to do is just eat it with like celery, like dip your celery in it and eat it like that, or on crackers. So that's what I'll be doing with the leftovers that didn't fit into our wraps. All right, so the timer just went off for this. It, the house smells so good. Amazing. <laughs> Evie's, smelt, Evie's taking deep breaths right now, trying to 
smell it. Literally amazing. So, so good. I can't wait to try it. But it does say like let it cool for a little bit before you eat it. Did that smell so good? It's more yummy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is how the chili came out. It looks so good and it smells amazing. And then for our stew over here, we now have to thicken it up and add some milk to it. So for this stew, I removed a half cup of the broth that was in there and now I'm putting in a half cup of milk. I'm gonna whisk all this together. I added one fourth cup of gluten-free flour. You can use regular flour too. We're gonna add it back in here. It's getting called for two third cups of frozen peas, but it's gonna measure it with my heart. Now we're just going to cook this on high, uncovered for about 20 more minutes, and then it's ready. It looks and smells so good. I know I keep saying that, but the house just smells amazing right now between everything. All right, so I'm gonna try the chili first. I'm trying not to get too full, because I'm actually going out to dinner for my sister's birthday. I'm gonna cut an hour. <laughs> it's really good. I can't figure out how to explain it. You can't taste the pumpkin at all, but it's just very like, I don't know, the spices are on point. Like, everything is really, really good. It almost reminds me of like, a bean dip that you would put like, chips into. You know what I mean? Like one of those layer dips is really, really good. Now I'm trying this too. What, baby? I can't see. Oh, that's a nut. Can you put it in the garbage for mommy? So I can smell the wine in this, which I love. I love like a good wine flavor. It's also delicious and very flavorful. You want more chicken wings? Yeah. It makes me kids chicken wings, like our Friday thing pizza and wings. I think, I think they're both like 10 out of 10, honestly. So much flavor in both of them, so good. All right, so while we are in our dinner realm, I'm just going to insert the other meals that I told you about that I cooked. This is a creamy butternut squash Alfredo. I just bought pre-packaged, already chopped up butternut squash just to make life easier. And I'm gonna go ahead and bake that for about 30 minutes and cook my sausage. I will have the recipes linked down below, so don't feel like you have to like pause and write things down or anything like that. But this recipe was beyond delicious it just had so many amazing flavors and textures and all of that so we make our sausage set it aside i'm using the same exact pan here and i'm just going to cook our garlic as soon as the garlic's in i'm putting our spinach in and just going to saute that until it's all cooked together Now we just add in our heavy cream and stir that up. And then we just add in our Parmesan cheese and let that sauce thicken up a little bit. I'm using the Jovial Bow Tie Pasta, which like I said, is just our hands down favorite. And in Alfredo sauce, of course, you always wanna add salt and pepper, but I love lots and lots of pepper in that. Now that everything is done, you just basically mix it all together and enjoy. That is it. It was so delicious. I definitely want to make it again. And like I said, we even eat the leftovers. The sausage that we used this time was really good. You can use whatever sausage you want. It was from Whole Foods. It was like a spicy um, chicken sausage and I definitely recommend it. It was really good. Now 
24 hour crock pot roast like I mentioned it was really good it just wasn't super flavorful and I like a lot of spices and flavor and things like that so we got a chuck roast from Whole Foods just throw that in the crock pot with this sauce that we're making out of all of these again I'll have the recipe linked down below if you like a more mild flavor then this would be perfect for you this was also the first time I ever made a roast that used horseradish and a lot of it so um, that was different but definitely helped give it some flavor but if you have a roast recipe like tried and true that you love definitely comment down below and let me know what it is um, keep in mind that we're gluten free so we can't be adding like ingredients I know a lot of people just add like pre-packaged like soup cans and stuff like that um, so we can't have any flour but again I would love to try your roast recipe so we basically add it in our veggies first and then um, we'll put the meat on top and pour the sauce over and all of that but the trick with doing a roast in the crock pot is I have tried to do my thing where, you know, I'm always like, all right, eight hours on low or four hours on high. But with this, if you cook it on high, I just feel like it gets very tough. So I definitely suggest cooking it low and slow all day long. Now we have all of our veggies in, we have our meat in, and I'm just putting lots of salt and pepper over the roast, and then we're going to make our sauce and pour that over. You would think all these flavors together would make a very flavorful roast, but it just, again, good, just not super flavorful. Um, and the reason I say, I know that people don't like non-flavored food, but some people don't like a lot of spices and stuff like that, so then I think this would be great for you, but I definitely like lots of spices. You just add beef bone broth, red wine vinegar, Dijon mustard, like I said, the horseradish, and some spices. Now you just pour that over. You'll make sure that the horseradish on the bottom is just mainly on your meat and just cook it on low for eight hours. We are on day two and right now we are making apple spice donuts and I'm actually using my little donut maker but I know that not everybody has a donut maker uh, but you can also make them in the oven there's little donut tins I've used in the past but these are a hit and they make the whole house smell amazing so we're basically just gonna mix all of the wet ingredients first and then add our dry I have a half a cup of whole milk an egg Two tablespoons of butter that I melted and then let cool. A teaspoon of vanilla. One tablespoon of maple syrup. A half cup of applesauce. I'm gonna mix all that together. A cup of gluten-free flour. You can use whatever type of flour you want. A teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of cinnamon. Gonna spray our little donuts. What do you call this? That's not a donut. Donut maker. Spray our donut maker. These smell so good. Look how cute they are. I'm gonna let them cool off, and um, then we're gonna make like a little icing for them, but we have a couple more batches to do. Ouch. All 
right, so our little donuts are done. They are so fast to make, but alone, they're just like cinnamon apple flavor. There's not a ton of sweetness, so that's why we do the topping. I just melted a little bit of butter, and we're gonna put that on, and then sprinkle on some cinnamon sugar. We actually have a cinnamon sugar thing because my kids like cinnamon sugar toast, or like sometimes they like it with butter on their waffle. So that is what we are doing. So next up we are making protein pancakes. These are a little different from the ones that I made in the past because there's no banana. Instead we're using pumpkin. So first we're gonna mix our liquid ingredients. Let me just double check exactly what, how much because I already forget. So it says two to four tablespoons of milk because that depends on if you like your uh, pancakes thick or more thin. So first I'm putting in the milk. I did four tablespoons because I didn't want like a really thick pancake. So again, just mixing the wet ingredients and we're gonna mix in the dry. One fourth cup of egg whites. And we have a half cup of pumpkin puree. Stir this up and then we'll add in our dry ingredients. Our dry ingredients consist of just one scoop. I'm using pumpkin spice protein powder, but you can use vanilla, whatever, but I'm staying with the pumpkin spice. I love Trivani, it's like the only protein that doesn't hurt my stomach. It's really good and it's plant-based. And then, now that this is all stirred together, which I love the smell of pumpkin, it smells. So now that that's all mixed up, I'm adding in my one scoop of pumpkin spice Trivani protein powder along with a half teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. And that's literally it. Not a lot of ingredients at all, super easy. This is just one serving, so if you want more, you can double, triple, whatever, how many people you're serving. First, we're using our pumpkin little pancake maker. So funny because the other day somebody was like do you ever have to like scrap a recipe from your video if it's not good and I'm like yeah definitely because it's happened in the past like like crock pot milk or whatever but I just tried this after the one fell apart and it is absolutely disgusting so we will not be eating these pancakes I am going to stick to my banana one which I'll put um, down in the description box and be using that with the protein this is not it's not good. It's not the protein because I love this protein. It's the combination of like the egg white. Not, it's not it. Not it. Not happening. Let's get back on track here. Make it something we know is going to be amazing. I'm going to watch them turn out like awful because I did that. Sweet Lorenz. We love this brand. This is the fudgy brownie cookie dough. And then they have a limited edition pumpkin spice. So we are making pumpkin spice cookie brookies, no, pumpkin spice brookies, that's it. So if you wanna play a fun drinking game, just take a shot for every time I have said pumpkin spice in this video. All right, so I've actually never done this before. I see people do it like all the time, but not. I've never seen anybody do it gluten-free, so you never know what you're gonna get with gluten-free, right? So basically I have a pumpkin spice, I have a shot, I have a brownie, and we're gonna smush them together and pray they come out good. So while the brookies are cooking, I am starting our final little dessert. So instead of brown sugar, I'm using coconut sugar, cinnamon and nutmeg, butter, oats, and then I have some walnuts to go on the top. So I'm also using honey crisp apples. So you basically just cut them in half, and then you're gonna use like a little melon scooper to take out the core. So you basically just combine all these ingredients into one bowl and stuff your apples and air fry them for 20 to 25 minutes on 350 degrees.
Apples were so good. I don't know if I can stand any more sugar, but I'm gonna have to try these, obviously. They look amazing. Evie, your outfit is just amazing. Pretty girl. Thank you for cleaning. You're welcome. Oh. <laughs> Let's try it. Can't really focus here, but it looks pretty good. Very, very good. Definitely like a chocolatey pumpkin spice deliciousness. So I'm gonna end it here. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you on Tuesday for the basement declutter, which I gotta hurry up and go get started on.